are you? Good. Did you want video or audio? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we are recording this. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go into my camera settings because I'm pretty sure I've got to zoom in on this one. So if I do that, eh, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, hi. Hi. Um, I'm sorry if our English is not very good. We don't speak it. No, no, well. no. It's it's fine. Um, English, it's the world's what second language. So what uh, what school are you guys part of? Um, we are in an apprenticeship. I don't know if you know this. In Switzerland, it's really common. We go. Um, we work at a place. Yeah. Uh, normal, but we go one or two days to school to learn the theoretical stuff. And part of the school um, final project. like final project is to do like a, a big report about something uh, interesting that we yeah. don't know much about. Exactly, and we we cool. picked uh, Earth and its forms and how the flat Earth community or other communities um, how they uh, act and do things and what they think and how they get their information and. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Exactly. Groovy. Okay. Yeah, are you ready for the interview? Let's do it. Okay, perfect. So I, I will start with the first question. Um, the first question is, since when do you believe the Earth is flat? Since how long was it? And yeah. Right, right. So okay. when when did I start looking into this? <clears throat> And, and by the way, did you guys, did you find me because of the documentary? Did you find me because of, of yeah, exactly. uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> so, you, so you know some of this already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but it's good for, we also make a presentation and then we can show sure. uh, a bit of the interview. So yeah. they know. Exactly. Totally fine. Uh, I got into this the uh, summer of 2014. I had looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, both media sanctioned and, you know, the fringe conspiracies. And I was really bored with conspiracies. So, cause I absorb a lot of media. And if you absorb a lot of media, TV and movies, eventually you're gonna, you're gonna get into the internet. You're gonna go down rabbit holes. Cause just why not? You know, yeah. some rabbit holes are like television shows and or movies. And everyone knows about Flat Earth and everybody hates it because we've been, we, you know, we were growing up. You know, it's like, look, it's a globe, it's a globe. You're told this since you're six years old. You know, the globe is, at least in, in, in our classrooms here, you're told that it's a globe since, you know, you're old enough to learn anything. And I was bored enough to look at it. And in fact, I looked at it because I started in on the hollow Earth theory which is kind of fringe, you know, that there's an inner core to the earth and it's like this prehistoric thing with ancient civilizations. And I thought that was kind of cool. And it was weird because one of the tangents from hollow earth led to flat earth <clears throat> because one of the, the leading guys in hollow earth, his name is uh, Admiral Richard Byrd. He was a uh, United States Admiral. He, I thought he would have continued down the hollow earth thing, but no, they sent him off to Antarctica and had him flying around for basically the, the rest of his career. I thought that was really, really interesting. And so I said, well, it's still stupid, so I'm not going to look at it. But I started pulling on some threads and nine months later, at the beginning of 2015, that's when I made my first video. I mean, I, I put a series of videos together, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I said, okay, the internet hive mind, the group collective that is the internet is very, very intelligent. So I put it out there. I said, here's what I think is happening. I don't think it's a globe anymore. I think it's flat. Here's why. And I put out all my contact information out there and said, shoot me down. Tell me how I'm wrong. And honestly, I was kind of hoping that somebody would shoot me down so I could just get back to my life. And it turned out to be a matrix type thing where it just got worse and worse to where here we are five years later and all sorts of things have happened. I mean, we did conferences in what, seven countries last year. And, yeah. you know, with the, if it wasn't for the virus, we would have kept going. So, yeah. Yeah. so you started to believe in the flat earth, the more you looked into it because nobody proved you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. The, the saying is every, nobody goes into the flat earth th loving it right away. Everybody hates it, including me. Which, which is a testament to the idea, which is the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. So I treated it like a court case. I tried going in and proving the globe, 
That's what everybody does. It's like, well, obviously the globe is the thing, right? And so, but the more you stare at it, the worse it gets. And so like I try to tell people, can I prove to you right now that the earth is flat? Can I prove it to you? No, cannot. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that you have nowhere else to turn but some sort of flat earth? Yeah, I can. I can do that all day long. And people say, well, that's not enough. I go, oh, in the United States it is. Uh, it's, you know, reasonable doubt is something that is used in court every hour of every day here. And it's a very, very powerful thing. And that's what we've done. Um, we've, we've had people basically start looking at the globe and, and the longer you stare at it, the worse it gets. It's where after a while you start looking going, my God, why did I believe in that thing? And after about two weeks, if you get into this, so it took me nine months, but the average time is about two weeks, maybe three. You get to this point where it's like the scales where, you know, globe on one side, flat on one side, and you get to this point where all of a sudden the flat starts leaning. And then once you're on that side, you can't go back. And the reason why you can't go back, and I think I said this in the documentary, I don't know if I worded it very well then though, which is you were the one that tore down the globe in the first place. I didn't convince you. I didn't persuade you. You're the one that looked at the globe and you're the one that tore it down. So once you tore it down, how are you going to put it back together? Which is why our retention rate is so high, which they didn't talk about in the documentary. So there you go. Okay. So mo most people who believe in flat earth are going to believe still to stay in this belief. Oh yeah. You nobody, know? we've got a 99% retention rate. That's, that's if higher they... than organized religion. I mean, okay. we, when yeah. any, when you go, when you get into flat earth, if you could actually make that, you know, make the corner and, and get on, on board with flat earth again, there's nothing to go back to. Even if you mm -hmm. wanted to, which is why, you know, a, a number of people in, in the Flat Earth community have tied it to the Matrix, which is mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the Matrix, like when uh, when Cypher, you know, it, there was a line in there. It's like, you know, even if you could go back, would you want to? And mm -hmm. that's why. I mean, you look, you, you're the one that, that made the globe look so bad that how, how could you? How could you? Something like yeah. you took the pill and then. Yeah, you took the pill. How can, like, you can't yeah. untake it. And okay. I know in the in the movie they kind of talked about how you could could but you can't in ours so there you go. Yeah. So um, is there like uh, one thing that convinced you that the Earth must be flat, or is it a big number of things? Well, you know, uh, like many reasons. Ev yeah. Everybody's got their favorite, which is also a, um, a neat thing about the flat Earth is that. Um, there's no one thing that everybody agrees on. It's, it's usually a combination of things, but everybody's got their favorite. Um, for most people, it's long distance photography, which is something that I didn't even get into because long distance photography, when I was, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was looking into it, wasn't a thing, which is when you look off into the distance, which they didn't talk about in the documentary too much, um, there are objects in the distance which you should not be able to see because of the curvature of the earth. But that wasn't mine. Uh, I remember it was in the documentary, like Seattle or something. Seattle, they, was, I talked about it in the beginning, but again, remember, they, they cut most of, you know, we were shooting for seven months and they only included a hundred minutes. So it's pretty short. Oh part. yeah, pretty pretty but short. By I, I know what you mean. With, we, I, we watched the documentary and we saw this part too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what so that, that's the normal one. For me though, the biggest one was the, um, the Antarctic Treaty, which is the, um, the Antarctica is... Since 1959, I don't think they talked about it that much in the documentary, which is it's locked down. Uh, you can only go there if you're military or military scientist. Now, if you are a tourist, you can spend, uh, in your case, uh, it's 12,000 euros, let's say. 12,000 euros and you could go there and you could go to the beach and have your picture taken with penguins. But here's where it gets interesting. The United States military, and this is on television, they weren't even secretive about it. They went on, they went down there in the 1950s and they found an entire mountain range made out of coal and oil and minerals and uranium. And they said, oh yeah, <clears throat> we're going to be fighting over this thing for years and years and years. We're going to be there forever. And then within a couple of years, they created this treaty called the Antarctic Treaty, which uh, was ratified in 1959. And it basically says no corporation from any country in the world can go down there ever. And it's not even open for uh, uh, review until 2041. It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. And that was a huge red flag for me because this world, at least if you're in the capitalism, and I know your country is, 
is based on greed and money and power. That's what everything's based on. Yeah. And yet this is one of those things that's beyond money. And it's like, what could, there's only a couple of conspiracies out there that are bigger than money. And this is one of them. And basically what they said was, <clears throat> we don't care how much oil and how much money is down there. It's not worth it to, because all you need is like one oil company plane or helicopter to go off course and go somewhere where it shouldn't be. And then all of a sudden you're tying up loose ends. And so somebody said, you know what, just lock it down, just seal it off. And that was a big, big, big thing for me. That was that was the thing that pushed me over the edge. And w that was the thing that made me make the, the original series of videos. And then after that, people just started calling me and writing me. It's like, oh, no, no, there's also this. And there's also this. And it's like, holy smokes. So after the mm -hmm. first six months, uh, I was, you know, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know, I was waiting again for some academic to come at me and say, okay, here's where you went wrong. You can shut down your YouTube channel. And instead it went the other way. I mean, I had subject matter experts from all branches of the military, engineers, pilots, uh, air traffic controllers, you name it. I had it just about everybody except for astronauts come at me and said, yeah, it's not crazy. And here's why. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but if you say down in the Antarctica, so much oil and uranium and in quotes money. Yeah. Uh, why would someone want to to um, hide it? Public, no, like the public. Why should the public believe the Earth is round? Um, gotcha. Why? It, why keep it a secret, right? Yeah, why? Yeah, why yeah. not? Why not tell people? Because if if it's there, there is money there. Yeah, there is so much order. money there. Why should they keep it a secret? Why because the yeah, because there are a few things out there that are more important than money. Uh, one of them is power and control and people say well what would and I, I don't care what group you believe in if you think it's the illuminati or the bilderbergs or the rothschilds or the trilaterals or the council of foreign relations or the vaticans or the masons doesn't really matter we'll just call them the the order right let's call them the order just someone someone does it yeah yeah there's 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 power and then there's groups above yeah. of those people the, the first rule of power has never changed and that is stay hidden it's one of the curses of having the ultimate power. You can't be overthrown if no one knows who you are. Mm -hmm. So you're yes. the puppet masters, but you can't tell anyone you're the puppet masters. It's really weird. You know, they want to be famous, but they can't be famous. So so anyone, they say, oh, the richest man in the world is this. Richest man. No, those, those are the richest public people in the world. Bill, Bill, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Please, not even close. So... Why would you keep this a secret? The, the big reason is because civilization had already been built by the time we figured it out. Meaning we didn't even know. You didn't even know for sure until about 1960 that this was the case because we just didn't have the, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't have the technology to explore it. Mm -hmm. So civilization had already been built. If you, let's say you're the king of France in the 1600s. You have wooden horses and you have ships. Sorry, wooden ships and horses. Strike that. Reverse it. You, you have you have very very limited technology until the internal combustion engine is built. Until you have pressurized airplanes, you don't really know much of anything. So, it's not what you have to gain; it's what you have to lose. Why you don't tell the public is that if you told them there would be potential shock waves that could damage civilization as we know it or at least the civilization they had spent so much time building and refining so um, yeah. think think of really quickly uh, three things academically your world um every physical science i don't care if it's biology archaeology geology hydrology ge anything with an ology next to it they have to be retooled literally from the ground up economically you would have to suspend world markets for months to figure out just what the hell it means but the big thing would be the um religious aspect of it i mean think of the the five major religious houses of this world um judaism buddhism hinduism islam and christianity right you're giving all these groups equal advantage against science and you're telling them not to seek retribution for what's happened to them over the last five centuries you know science has been beating religion over the head with textbooks for a long 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 time and that's not going to happen anymore uh, because, because of this. Those potential shock waves, if, sorry, you, you have to keep it a secret. I mean, I, I agree. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm one of those conspiracy guys that I look at the other side of the fence 
and say, okay, is what they're doing for the greater good? And yeah, yeah, they were worried that civilization might collapse. If, if there's even a 10% chance that people would freak out and run through the streets with pitchforks and torches and burn things down, you don't do it. So that's, that's the big reason why. And keeping it a secret, it's just time and money. It's not that hard. I mean, yeah, they lost a lot of money in the process, potential money, because they couldn't go for the oil, they couldn't go for the uranium, but it's always there in case they need it. I don't think they're going to be needed anytime soon, though. Okay. Uh, uh, what would you say? How big is the flat Earth community, and is there any? Is there are there any hotspots? Like there are many people live in the flat Earth. Or there, it the, the it started in the English-speaking countries or countries that at least knew English. Um, you know, uh, United States, England, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. Uh, places like that and then it spread to Europe and then finally Asia I think but if you want I mean there are millions and millions of people that believe in this thing the problem is is peer pressure meaning people and I have, I have I know this because I mean 90% of our community is in the closet because they're afraid of retribution from friends or family or co-workers mostly co-workers friends and family you can sort of deal with Co-workers, you got to go to work. If you're going to work every day, you don't want to hear that every day. Perfect example would have been um, the basketball star, uh, Kyrie Irving. He would have been the, the perfect example. You know, he came out a couple of years ago before an all-star game. You know, he had just won his championship. LeBron James was his best friend. He was 25. He had his own shoe line. Great. What do I got to lose? Screw you. I live in the flat earth. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, he didn't realize that the media has access to him all the time. You know, he, he has to go, you know, every game, they lock, they go into the locker room. Hey, do you think they want to talk about points and offense and defense? No. They want to talk about flat earth because you said it. Um, uh, other guys are subtle, like um, uh, Novak Djokovic. Right? When, when, when he was... Oh, yeah. God, yes. I got a picture of him holding up a flat sign, but he's really quiet about it. <laughs> I Wait, I, here I should send. Well, we're on Skype. Wonder if I can send it to you. Hang on one second. I've got a picture of him. Let's see if I can find it real fast. Please tell me I've got it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's here's Novak. Copy. Here I'll put it to you in. We're in Skype. Yeah. Let me exactly. put it in Skype chat. Hang on, it's gonna take a minute. Okay, you should have it in Skype chat. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's in? Yeah, what's I in, see it. I what, see it. What's interesting about this shot, by the way, is he didn't draw that. You know who drew that? His, no. His daughter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, but he's really quiet about it. You don't see him do a lot of, of interviews and people have not really asked him about it. So that was kind of cool. But the, the, the backlash potentially, like Shaquille O'Neal, he was, he was with us for Basketball Star over here. He was with us for 10 days. <laughs> and then his sponsors, because he makes $20 million a year in endorsements and he hasn't played for years. Well, all it takes is one sponsor to call his agent, say, yeah, he really shouldn't be talking about this. And that was it. He had to go on a late night talk show and retract it and yep. you know yeah. but so it there's a if you ever want to have fun type in flat earth into whatever search engine convert it to whatever language you you want and then plug that back into google plug in flat earth convert it into another language it's amazing how many countries i mean i can only deal you know because i don't speak any other languages mm -hmm. but there are they're in every country tons of them We're, one of the big hot spots is brazil don't know why brazil's a big one um australia is pretty big um the united states of course uk big uh other countries i mean i i did a thing in fact i was in your neck of the woods last year i did the i opened at the gather festival in um stockholm oh, last year okay yeah and that wasn't even a flat earth conference that was weird the audience just staring at me like i was from mars it was awesome <laughs> okay but but do you talk on a lot of flat earth conventions or just sometimes or do don't you do that at all oh no no i, I do it every every chance i get um oh. last year we i did conferences in oh god and i'm gonna have to remember all these los angeles 
Calgary, Canada, Stockholm, uh, London, Melbourne, Australia. Wait, no, new, no, sorry, Auckland, Auckland, New Zealand. I did a commercial in Melbourne. Uh, did two others in the United States. I can't remember their names, but we had conferences all over the place. And yeah, every chance I get. In fact, I'm I'm going to a conference in um, three weeks. Fine. This is my first conference this year. Yeah, um, I think Corona did. Yeah, well, yeah. Did. Since Corona, it's like nobody. But we found a venue that's not requiring masks. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah. I mean, I that was my only requirement. I go, I'm not wearing a mask. So I'm I will go to this one. And that one's on the East Coast in uh, South Carolina. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, uh, yes. Where do you get your information about Fledolf? Dun dun dun. Um, it's all out there. It's not secret information. The any information you want to find about it is well, it was it was harder when I first got into it. Now there's just tons of articles and, and videos about it made by all sorts of people that have done experiments. Well, from the internet, right? What? So you, you get it mostly over. Oh, the almost all from the internet. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Who, who reads books anymore? It's it's all the internet. But now there's tons. Of, the difference is there's tons and tons and tons of content out there on the internet. Before, again, when I when I got into this in 2014, there was so few things to look at, other than older books. You know, older books going back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, I even joined the original Flat Earth Society out of Hong Kong just to see, it's like, okay, what's going on? And then I find out that they were just a placeholder group that didn't either didn't do anything or were completely undermined by the government because mm -hmm. they were basically telling people when you went in there, it's like, it's not real. It, you know, don't take it seriously. Nothing to see here. Go away. I was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. You guys are spending all that effort for a group that only had like 500 people in it. So... So would you say the Flat Earth Society, or not exactly society, but the community did grow a lot in the last years? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if the everything before 2015 was, it, we'll use a software version, was Flat Earth 1.0. We're Flat Earth 2.0. Okay. Everything. Okay. I mean, no, it's social so, media. Uh, the, the, the big bigness i don't know how to like say like the percentage of yeah how much did it expand since oh, oh no i'll give you i'll give you a great example so when we were into when we first got into youtube if you typed in flat earth into youtube at the beginning of 2015 the search results and that's this isn't you know search results wasn't just videos it was also references came up around 50,000 50,000 okay. references in youtube in the summer of 2018 we were at 20.9 million on, okay, on, on YouTube. Okay. And then they shut it down. They shut down the uh, the scoreboard. So now when you go into YouTube, search results, that search results equals a number is gone. It's been gone for now for almost two years. And people say, you know, oh, you're delusional if you think that Flat Earth did that. It's like, no, I absolutely did that. Because we were tracking, I was, I've got the videos on my channel. We were, we were tracking higher than most mainstream people. So like the president of the United States in 2018, he was at 20.8 million. And we, when we passed him 20.9, I literally made a video on my channel called Flat Earth Passes the President of the United States. The only people that were ahead of us at that time, not, not in like YouTube subscribers, but relevant search results, were people like Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, like, people like, like that. We were- Actors or- uh, no Actresses singers or singers. Or... Yeah, we were destroying. I mean, Lady Gaga at the time was only at like 14 million relevant search mm -hmm. results and we were at 20 and that shows mm -hmm. you in fact there was a guy that worked for google that came out in fact he was in a documentary on on netflix called uh, the social dilemma and of all the topics it was weird weird they asked him they asked him they say okay why do things get recommended to me and you on the side bar of youtube right recommended for you for three years we were getting recommended constantly and they, his answer was, well, of all the topics, he only brought up one topic out of all the thousands of topics on YouTube. He goes, well, if the average person that gets into Flat Earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? Basically, we became, we became a binge uh, watch topic, mm -hmm. if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, people yeah. were just, just staring there. You know, you're not going to watch just one. You're just going to keep watching because you can't believe it. And you just keep watching. So, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, uh, do you think other planets are flat too, or is it just the Earth? So would you say like Mars or... Oh, it's worse than that. <laughs> are the other planets flat too? No, what I'm saying is the planets that you see up there are just lights in the sky. They're not flat or round. They're just images on a, on a giant television screen. Meaning okay. when you go to a planetarium, and I don't know if you have any planetariums, what, what town are you in? Um, I, I, so I, I live in Bern in Switzerland and we have one there. Yeah, so have. I know that. We have, I was there um, like years ago. Okay. I was there once. So in, in a planetarium, people, you know, I tell people, like, okay, you see the moon up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does it look spherical? Yeah, it does. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just a light on the ceiling. Well, who's okay. to say when you walk out of that planetarium, you're just not in a much, much bigger one. I mean, it's easy. We're so easy to create illusions for, for people. Human beings are extremely susceptible to simulations. I mean, even before computer simulations, you probably knew people that couldn't watch like a roller coaster on television because they get ill. You know, yeah. it's like first person's like, oh, I can't watch that. I knew people. I mean, even I got dizzy like playing the, the first versions of Mario Kart. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, I couldn't under I couldn't explain it. So, and then once computer simulations came came in, well, all bets were off. So, yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Do you have any idol idols regarding your opinion about the flat Earth or? Do I have any? Sure? Like an idol, like a, like someone you look up to. Oh, does Earth. someone I look up to in, in terms of flat Earth? Um. Yeah. There are people, yeah, I mean, there's people I respect in different communities a lot. I don't know if I, if I look up to anybody because every, at my level, everybody's worth the, I'm at the conference level. So everybody that I'm, that I'm working with, they're all doing their different parts, but we're all kind of on equal footing. I mean, we, we go to the conferences together. We go to meetups together, um, you know, different, okay. I, I, I have like, my, I have my start. favorites, but I think they're mostly personal favorites. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, so so you didn't have in the start like somebody who you thought he makes really good content, he knows. Oh, in the, in the very beginning, yeah, there was one guy that I looked up to in the very beginning. He was in the documentary. That was Matt Boylan, the, okay. the, the, okay. you know, the, the artist slash actor slash whatever he is. Um, yeah, no, I thought I was like, wow, visionary. He's got all this, these great ideas in his head. And then I find out later that he couldn't he couldn't do an interview if he saved his life. Initially, I thought he was just being um, e evasive with the media. It's like, no, no, I don't want to talk to the media. And then I, I heard him do a couple of interviews. It's like, wow, he is so terrible at this. So that's when. <laughs> I, but but it's okay. I mean, he's still a very very interesting guy. Uh, the producers call me still to this day. Call me and they say it's like, oh, do you know how to get a hold of Matt Boyle? And it's like, oh god, the the camera loves him. People like watching him. They, there's just, I mean, you got to remember that he was in the documentary. He was never officially interviewed. They just grabbed clips off of YouTube because he mm -hmm. wouldn't, he couldn't agree to them. He's just, he's got such a horrible way of, he doesn't play well with others. He never has. And I know some artists are like that, but yeah, I looked up to him in the beginning. Absolutely. Other than that, no, everybody else is a peer. Okay. I see. Are there any like leading personalities now in the community where like people look up to them or which have a big following? Of well, yeah, I mean, there's some big channels out there. I mean, Eric Dubé from Thailand is always, you know, he's always gotten stuff. Uh, Jaron Campanella, he was also in the documentary. Bob from Globebusters. Uh, David Weiss from DITRH. Um, uh, I love what Roxanne, Roxanne Glenn over in the UK, she's doing a lot of stuff. Uh, Nathan Oakley is doing a lot. I mean, there's so many people that are doing great stuff that, I mean, everyone's like, when it comes to followers on YouTube, if that's what people base it on, I don't know if I'm even in the top 10 in terms of like subscribers and I'm, okay. I'll hit a hundred K maybe not this year, but, uh, but in fact, most of my most of my videos, the hits from my videos didn't even come from my channel. That was the best part is that people took my videos and put them on other channels and I didn't even know because I, you know, I, I set my, 
it got spread the message like you told in your videos got spread around over other channels yeah so yeah much. i had i had no i had no idea that it was that it was going that way um because i when you say creative commons on youtube people can take your videos and they don't have to they don't have yeah. to ask you yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like okay and and so people were telling me it's like oh yeah i love this and i love that and it's like what are you talking about <laughs> and then i go i go to these channels and it's like wow holy smokes you never, mm -hmm. you never know with with the general public what's going to resonate. I mean, it was the exact same stuff that was on my channel, but a different title and a different, just a, just subtle, not not in the content, but the way they presented it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. Flat Earth wasn't even in the was not even in the title of the top four or five mirrors that were done. So, whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, something different. What would what would you need to hear that you would change your opinion? What What would you need to see or read that you would believe in the round earth? Two yeah. things. Two things. Um, the first thing would be the um, uh, if it was possible. And this is the, I'll give you an expensive option and a cheap option. And the expensive option isn't even that expensive. You take a any camera, you know, digital camera. Mm -hmm. You put it on the capsule of a rocket that's going to leave orbit. You point it. Okay. You point it down at the ground. You do not hit pause. You do not edit the footage in any way, and you let the rocket launch. And eventually, everything is going to form into a globe as as you leave. Yeah. Video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Video would be wonderful. It's never happened in the history of space travel. Yeah. Ever. 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 Um, in fact, the last person that should have been able to do it was the uh, the Tesla Roadster in space. Never mm -hmm. happened. Um, okay. That would be the first thing. The mm -hmm. other one, though, which is down on the ground, which you can do is loan me a spacesuit. Show, you know, put me in a spacesuit and put me in a vacuum chamber and throw the switch and tell me what happens. Tell me, tell me how it works, because the spacesuit cannot work as advertised. It absolutely cannot. Okay, um, so you think the spacesuit isn't even um, suitable to use in space? No. No, it's, like it's it, not even remotely okay. feasible. And and it's one of the my top five points that I throw at people. I say, look, the law of thermodynamics, or one of the laws, I should say, is that pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier, right? That's, that's just how it works. You can't have a vacuum over here, an atmosphere over here, and nothing in the middle. They will equalize. They will equalize instantly, um, which is why when you see... Um, uh any you put any go on youtube all day long put anything in a vacuum chamber because we like doing this and you know everything from a tin can to a, a football to uh, anything that's pressurized and it will expand until it finally detonates anything that's mm -hmm. soft will will go rigid very very quickly yeah. there's only one object that this doesn't apply to and that's the spacesuit the spacesuit should turn into a basketball why doesn't the spacesuit turn into a basketball no one will tell me I go, what magical technology is in that backpack that stops the vacuum of space? And people say, well, it's layers. I go, no, no, my, my winter coat has layers. It only keeps me warm. So why, what, what's in there? And it was brilliant. If you look up the history of NASA spacesuits, it was a brilliant move. Initially, they knew full well. It's like that the early spacesuits were big and they were made out of metal and plastic. And they were horribly, you know, you couldn't move around very well. It's like, you're not going to go up on a ladder in this. And a capsule, you're not going to be able to do anything. And then finally, somebody came up with a great idea. They said, you know what? Let's just use a soft suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reason why is nobody, the general public doesn't know anything about physics. We're not taught about physics or engineering or chemistry or microbiology. We're just barely put through school, especially over here. It's like, can you drive? Good. That's about as good as you're going to get. And you do that and you put it on television. So you have a soft suit. Their arms can bend. Their knees can bend. Their fingers. You can manipulate electronics. Like, oh my God, no. I mean, you should just go boop. You know, it should turn into a basketball and it should explode and they should die. And that does mm -hmm. not happen. Absolutely does not happen. Everything, in fact, here, let me let me send you something real fast. Let's look at another picture. You'll like this. I, I, I put this in my speech last year. And it is a single, I know the video will probably screw up for a second when I do this. Give me one sec. Okay. So that's a, just a random shot from the uh, Apollo 12, 1969, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Looks fine, right? The longer you stare at that thing, the worse it gets. 
right now. So, and again, this was in, these were in magazines that we put over here. The average person doesn't understand what they're looking at because we're not taught. Okay. A couple things real fast. Ready? Mm -hmm. Um, the sun, anyone that knows anything about photography, right? If you have a single light source, the shadow should go in one direction, right? Yeah. Well, exactly. how, how many directions you got there? At least four. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that can only happen if, if yeah. the light source is really, really close, like 30 yards away. If the sun is 93 million miles away, this, the shadows will be going in one direction. You can test this going outside. All the shadows are always in the same direction. Uh, second thing would be, see all those footprints around there in that nice gray ash, right? You know, it's like three or four inches of ash. No one talks about why there's only three or four inches of ash on the ground, right? All mm -hmm. these footprints, footprints, for, they're all over the place, except mm -hmm. underneath the engine of the capsule. That thing supposedly has 10,000 pounds of thrust and there's no, there's no splay pattern. There's no blast pattern underneath the capsule at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll do one more for you and then we'll, you know, we'll continue on. Um, the spacesuit I already talked about, right? The spacesuit. They're walking around the complex electronics, including hooking up that satellite dish in the middle, right? That mm -hmm. satellite dish is run off of a car battery, right? This is not secret military technology. This is, you know, it has a range of maybe 50 miles if you're lucky. And that even okay. then we're talking Morse code, 50 miles. And supposedly that beamed... At a quarter million miles, 250,000 miles, 10 frames of color video, a second and perfect two-way communication without any distortion whatsoever. No, 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 no. Okay. Does this prove a flat earth? No, it does not. Does it absolutely wreck the American space program? Yeah. Don't believe the Americans. If you're in the United States, hey, it's like, go, go, wave the flag. We're the greatest, right? We love doing that. Outside the United States, why is everyone believing what we say? Just because we put it on television? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just staggering. It's like, oh, yeah, the Americans went to the moon. It's like, what? <laughs> we, we make movies about all sorts of stuff, and you bought that one? Come on. Anyway, there you go. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what are the most believable conspiracy theories in your eyes in general? Well, I'm sorry, uh, say that say that one more time. Except the flat earth. Yeah, what are the flat what earth, are conspiracy uh, theories you would say are believable? Are they are the true. most believable. In oh, my eyes. favorite conspiracies. Yeah. yeah exactly. Besides um, the besides the flat earth. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's do them real quick. Um, favorite ones that you would know anyway. Uh, 9/11 words yeah what they what they are because maybe okay so not the 9-11 conspiracy says that the americans had something to do with destroying their own towers that they were the ones that it was an inside job there's a short version 9-11 was an inside job okay. uh the easy way to explain that if anyone comes at you and says oh you know this is oh no it was absolutely legit it's like okay explain building seven most americans think that only two buildings dropped towers one and towers two there was a third building called building seven which was a 50-story building that wasn't even close it was off to the side it wasn't hit by a plane little fire started in the ground floor for whatever reason and then in the afternoon after the entire manhattan was evacuated it just collapsed it just dropped okay. anyone knows anything about engineering that's that's not how it works um a couple others uh, pearl harbor that's a great one for me which is, was Pearl Harbor allowed to be attacked? Mm -hmm. That's the conspiracy. Was Pearl Harbor a setup? And it's like, well, think about it this way. The Germans had pretty much run over everybody on the European side. And we had, there were so many German citizens in the United States that the whole plan was to take the United States without firing a shot. Because there were, there were many, many German sympathizers, especially in the North, Wisconsin and Minnesota and places like that. And so... The Americans did not want to get into the war. And so wonderful timing, <laughs> Pearl Harbor is attacked and we declare war on Germany the very next day. If Pearl Harbor is not attacked, the world is speaking German right now. Okay. How, how's that one? So you think that Pearl Harbor was also like an inside shot by the Americans yes. that they could start a war? I do. I, okay. I don't think the Americans dropped the bombs necessarily, but I think they allowed Japan to come in. 
Absolutely. Uh, yeah. They didn't defend to themselves. Yeah, exactly. Um, the moon, the moon landing, of course, is a big conspiracy. Uh, I just laid that out for you. You know, the moon landing. Why would you fake it? Well, if you're in a flat Earth, you have to fake it. You have to militarize space. You've got to keep. You want. You don't want private corporations. Uh, JFK was that an inside job? Probably. Uh, and mostly because he was going to be causing a lot of problems. The, the big problem, most people don't understand, and people, people have a lot of theories about JFK, but for JFK, our president, being killed in the 1960s, it was because he was going to get reelected. He was killed in 63. He would have been reelected in 64. I mean, no one was going to beat him except maybe Jesus. And then he would have gone from 64 to 68. And then his brother, Bobby, would have gone from 68 to 72 and 72 to 76. And at that point, who might, we would have maybe even forgiven his, his other brother, Teddy. I mean, they didn't, no one's going to want, the powers that be don't want 16 years or more of Kennedys in the White House. They, they weren't mm -hmm. going to tolerate it. He was too much of a pain in the ass. Um, there's all sorts of little ones. But here, I'll give you, I'll give you an exclusive one. Something I wrote about in my book that nobody talks about. Here's a perfect example of a conspiracy. You ready? Mm -hmm. The Panama Canal. Okay, what's that? Why Why is the Panama Canal a conspiracy? You know, the Panama Canal is that little... Well, I shouldn't say little. It's a big ditch that allows people to go through the middle yeah, of, you know... I, I know what yeah, you know what the Panama what Canal is. Why is that a conspiracy? Um, when you have big engineering projects like that, people die. You know, not a lot of people though. And so when like when you build a big dam or a big bridge, you're gonna have people falling. Like we built the mm -hmm. Hoover Dam, we, we lost I think seventy people. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. It happens. Right? People die. Um you know how many people died in, in the making of the Panama Canal, which was basically, you know, a big ditch. Mm -hmm. Better part mm -hmm. of six thousand. That's a lot. I mean that's more sure. than Pearl Harbor and the World Trade Center combined. Mm -hmm. So what's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is this. Well, you and I and you and I say, well, you'll nod when I say this. I say, well, they died of malaria and yellow fever, and you're going, oh, pff, of course, right? Well, mm -hmm. the problem there is that you, you'll you'll come back and you'll say, well, it's not like we knew they were going to die. Oh, yeah, we did. We knew full well they were going to die. We were going to, in fact, we were fully prepared to lose more than that. And the reason is because we didn't start the Panama Canal. The French did. France started mm -hmm. the pa Panama Canal at the end of the 1800s, and they lost so many guys that they had to quit. They lost 21,000 men. I mean, just I mean, that's more than some wars, right? You, that's a lot of guys. I mean, they were just getting eaten alive from that place to where they just put down their shovels and they said, that's it, we're done, and they went home. America mm -hmm. came and was like, yeah, <laughs> let's go in. How many men can we lose? And they figured, well, we have better mosquito netting. We have, you know, better repellents. They were willing to lose up to 10,000 men. Why is that a conspiracy? The conspiracy is when you hide something from the public that is either illegal or potentially unethical. Mm -hmm. So do you tell the people, this wasn't military we sent down there. This was civilians, right? Mm -hmm. Do you tell people that are signing up to be an engineer down in the Panama Canal that you have a one in eight chance of dying? Right? Not getting ill, but just dying. Do you tell them this? No, you do not. Why not? Well, because you want these people to go down there. Do the, ones work there you do. do the ends justify the means? That's how I qualify any conspiracy. Do the ends justify the means? In this case, yeah, they did. Panama Canal, a fantastic military choke point. We owned it. It's also the most expensive toll road in the world. And we charged, we made billions. It's still making a ton of money for, for them. And you could say that with the same thing. 9-11, what happened? The United States became a permanent installment in the Middle East for oil. There's a reason why our oil... I, I, when, I, when I was in Stockholm, I, I asked them, I go, how much are you guys paying for, for gas over there? And they were paying something along the lines of $10 a gallon. Right? Mm -hmm. I go, yeah, we're not even paying half that. Do you know yeah. why? <laughs> That's because we're there and you're not. We, you know, and how do you get there? You have to create something to do that. It's like, look, it happens in politics. Um, go back to, I know you guys aren't old enough to remember, but the, you may or may not heard of like the Reichstag fire where the United yeah. States or the Germ Germans burned down their own parliament building and blamed it on the communists so they could install the Nazi regime. Things, mm -hmm. you do things for the greater goal and some things that, and if you, if you don't want the people to know about it, then you don't tell them. And that's when they become conspiracies. There are media, look, we, we all know full well that in the world we have conspiracies. 
in politics and business and sports and entertainment and yes, yeah, science and, and journalism and occasionally religion from time to time. Uh, some, if the media covers it, it's covered as a scandal and or a tragedy. And if they don't cover it, then it's conspiracy and it's probably not real. Why? Because they, because the media yeah. doesn't want to talk about it. So sorry, that's my yeah. my ramble. Okay. Okay. Uh, and are there any conspiracy theories? Do, uh, do you think they're completely unreasonable or ridiculous? I used to. I used to think that all sorts. Well, you know, people have heard me say this before many times, and that is like, did did Bigfoot have Elvis's baby? No. You know, are there are there all sorts of weird, you know, conspiracies out there that I didn't believe in five years ago? Sure. Why not? I would blow them off. Do I think that every member of the uh, UK royal family are lizards? You know, no, probably not. But then again, I'm into flat earth. So how can I judge you? So yeah, yeah. five years ago, when I got into this, all of a sudden realized like, you know, beforehand, it's like lizards. I'd be like, get out of here. But now I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'll give you a couple of minutes. What do you got? Because why, why not? What, what leg do I have to stand on? Um, do there are so many concerns. Here's the other thing. When you get into flat earth, you revisit all your old conspiracies because you yeah. think, holy smokes, if this isn't true, then everything I'm going to have to relook at. Um, a great example would be here. I'll, I'll send you one more real quick. Uh, let's see speech. Okay. You don't like this. So here's a here's a great one. I said, did I send that? I think I did. Um, I didn't there it is. It. Okay. Yeah, no, so this is a, a perfect example. So like Loch Ness monster. Have you heard of that one? Mm -hmm. All right, Loch Ness monster. Are there dinosaurs swimming around in some of the lakes? You know, freshwater lakes in England and other places. No. Why not? Why not? Well, because they've been dead for at least a hundred million years. All right. And then I come back, I say, okay, look at this rather unattractive fish right here. Every scientist in the world, every single one of them agreed that it's been dead for at least 70 million years. There's the fossil of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem. The problem is, is because then the British found one off of South Africa. And then another one off of Madagascar and then Mozambique. And then finally... National Ge Geographic does a special and they're swimming around with them. So then I come, I come back to you and I say, is the Loch Ness monster silly? And, and you say, you say, well, yeah. Well, I go, why? Because it's been dead for at least a hundred million years. I go, really? Cause this fish mm -hmm. wasn't. And mm -hmm. you know, things like that, especially, especially with things called cryptozoology which I don't know if you've ever heard this term before. Science is one of those groups that drives me nuts sometimes because they say, because and saying, they'll, they'll admit to this. They'll say science is true until the day that it's not. And they have to revise things. Like the giant panda was a myth because science didn't find one. The giant anaconda was a myth. The giant squid, that fish, and so on and so on. I mean, hell, uh, 2015, look up something called the, um, the billy ape which is a six foot tall chimpanzee in South America. That's really, really smart at hiding from people for good reason, right? Six feet tall, chimp running around. And they finally found one in 2015. And it's like, holy, sm and they, you know, they want, but they had to find a dead one before they start, even started confirming it. But up until then though, scientists won't believe it. So what was the original question? Do I think there are conspiracies that are absolutely- Yeah, like, like um, conspiracy theories where uh, a good think, bit yeah. of people believe in, but you think it's completely unreasonable or something. But you would, or, say or would you are... say, would you say every conspiracy theory has some true um, to it? Core? There are very few now that I would actually say that it, that they're ridiculous. Very, very few. Okay. I mean, okay. and even then, I mean, because I can't discount. I mean, you gotta remember, five years ago, if you would have, I mean, I have literally talked to cons heavy, heavy conspiracy guys. I remember this when, I mean, they would tell me, it's like, oh yeah, the royal family are lizard people. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, yeah, yeah, but I'm in the flat earth. And they go, get the hell out of here. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you just told me about lizard people. So I can't, I mean, I, I can almost, di with the exception of the Elvis and Bigfoot thing, uh, almost none of them. You know, do I think okay. that, I mean, it, 
honestly, I can only with 99% assurity say that this conspiracy, you know, this conspiracy or this conspiracy isn't real, but I'm not going to say 100% because five years ago, Flat Earth was absolutely wrong. Yeah. So okay. and here's, here's one more for you real quick. So this is part of a, a slideshow that I was using for my, um, my speech, which is that is, I know it's going to be kind of tough to see, I'll have to blow it up, but again, remember for the first 4,500 years of our civilization, everybody thought the world was flat. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all drew all these cultures. A lot of them didn't even know each other, drew the same freaking thing. And then 500 years ago, that changed. So, you know, is it, did it change because we weren't supposed to find out? I, I mean, I think it was partially deliberate. I'm surprised you haven't asked that yet. Where, you know, why, why would you, who would hide it? You know, aside from us. And I think whoever built this place probably hid it. Because mm -hmm. once people are really super, super curious about things where we love a mystery... And if you knew there was an edge to the world, your civilization, parts, parts of your civilization, civilization would be dedicated to finding it, which is what our government did. Once we got mm -hmm. decent engines, that's all, that's all the United States did for a while. They just didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, we, we kind of skipped the who question because you said before that you don't know who it is. Because you who said built like, it? Uh, it, it doesn't matter who it is. Somebody is, it, you call yeah, it like, like the order. The or well, there, well there's, two, there's two layers to that. Okay, who's hiding it? The, the powers that be. But who built it? Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing because we had nothing to do with this place. I like the earth. Ah, you mean like the... Uh, ah, do you believe that the earth has like a couple over it like the sky is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Every like, Look at the drawing that I sent you. I mean... The norm for flat earthers to believe that or do some believe it's just a flat earth but everything else is like they say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's in fact here here's a cover from this is what i believe in right about here this is the cover of skeptic magazine from last year and okay. what, what basically most of the the flat earth community and i'm gonna ballpark it will say 70 percent think that we're living on a flat disc basically a dinner plate okay. But 70% mm -hmm. of us think that there's some sort of dome sealing us in, which is why we get a pressurized system. The other 30% just don't believe in the dome. And mostly okay. I think that's a personal thing where they just, it's mostly very, very creative people. It's like, man, I don't, they don't like confinement. You know, there's a reason why jails are a bad thing. You know, people don't like being fenced in. And so people don't, there's a lot of people that just don't even like the idea of the dome, even though the dome is really what makes the most sense when it comes to the atmosphere and pressurization. Mm -hmm. So, I Okay, okay. I see. But by the way, who built that? Again, who built that whole structure right there? It wasn't us. Not even, not even close. We, our engineering is very, very limited, you know, as far because we just don't have enough power. We don't have a unified field engine or anything to generate massive amounts of power. So whoever built it was either an older civilization, much more powerful than ourselves, or the divine. But then you're kind of splitting hairs, aren't you? Because well, I mean, let's face it, if a, if a giant spaceship landed, came out and says, we built it, right? You'd have two groups of people. One would be the nerds that would say, oh, wow, they do look like, you know, the people from Avatar. Or the, you have another group that would start up a church like right away. And they would say, we must worship okay. the blue people. And okay. you know, so take your pick. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Be, uh, all our questions cool is yeah. there is there any other resources you need any other link i mean you you've gone to my channel so you've got some access to stuff if yeah we've watched some videos but maybe if you have like a a forum where many yeah. flat earthers um look things up if we could get that yeah, on the facebook page well i'll yeah. tell I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what i'll send you first because there's a lot of videos on my channel that um well i shouldn't say but there's there's playlists on my channel in fact here there's playlists on my channel that have nothing to do with my channel but they will help you like one would be in fact i don't think i would i did any of these experiments other than the moon one these uh flat earth experiments yeah this one will work. So here's some of our best experiments that we've collected. That's flat earth test experiments. Check out that list if you get a chance. A lot of them, you know, again, they're on my channel, but a lot of them were made by people that weren't me. 
Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This one, cool. this one, be interesting because this would be a list of subject matter experts that talked about flat earth, including you know what some some of which came back repeatedly. One of the ones down below, uh, a pilot, a female pilot that uh, flew for KLM, for example. She mm -hmm. she came out. They benched her. They they stopped her from flying because they wouldn't. They said you can't you can't fly the plane if you believe in this, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, there's all sorts of playlists on there. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. I've been doing a lot of rants on the virus lately, which is a whole other new conspiracy. But those two would usually get you started. Um, there's also here is one more. The flatter shortlist for new people which is a collection I try to update on a regular basis. Let me see if they're all there. Yep, they are. That's, uh... And I forgot, where. what country is um, PewDiePie from? Sweden. Sweden. It gets often... Um, Switch. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we are not from the same country. Gotcha, we are from gotcha. I, yeah, I, yeah I, I will remember that now. He's from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, they used the wrong flag when Spotify got to the... Um, and um, what's it called? Wall Street. Like, yeah, uh, like the financial markets. Yeah. Yeah, they used the wrong flag. <laughs> they they um, hoist the Switzerland flag, but it's actually from Sweden. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets confused a lot in America, I think. Yeah. Also, the, the Red Cross and the uh, Swiss Cross gets often mixed up because our cross is white and red around it and Oftentimes you see a red cross where the red cross is white. Wow. It's, it's funny. <laughs> um, I'll give you one more list, which is Flat Earth in the Media. And this will show you, you know, some of the, some of the different people that have been doing, you know, talking about Flat Earth. Okay. But anyway, between those four lists, you usually have tons of, okay. of resources. Thank you very course. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. Good. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, thanks very much, guys. I hope it's... Um, Hope w your presentation goes well. If you need anything yeah, else, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, yeah it, it was a really good interview. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was very Happy easy to talk with you and interesting. Happy yeah. to do it, guys. Thank you. I noticed you in the back. You um, you haven't talked much. What's that three one three on your shirt? That's Detroit. Carhart. Oh. It's, <laughs> it's the the label. Got it. <laughs> very nice. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Okay, thank you, thank you very uh, much. Goodbye. Bye. All right, have a good Bye. one. See ya. Bye. Bye.